Hi guys, welcome to this next video in the Simplify OpenTX series. I'm Darren and today we're going to be looking at onboard glows and how we can pretty much automate the whole process even with a cheap 15 quid um, onboard glow system from eBay. Check it out. This is the RCD 3007 unit. So you've got one bit that goes on the glow plug, one bit that goes on the ground, and inside, you can't see it because it's buried, but inside the other side of there, there is the control board. You have this lead here that goes off to, let's get up in there. There's a little buzzer and a button unit you can use the button to control it manually and the yellow lead goes into the receiver to do it remotely now usually you set this up with a um a switch but i've got it to work automatically so what i can do is show you what's going on so it's yeah it's a standard s6r receiver i've just got it in channel six and here's the tyrannus so what I'll do is I'll show you how it works and then we'll head over to the desktop and I'll show you how to program it. So, Trinus is on, I'll switch on the model. Telemetry recovered. So, at the moment, you can hear it just beeping. This is the off beep. <laughs> right, so I can show you how this is working. So, this is in a disarmed position at the moment and to get the glow driver working, I just raise the throttle and then lower it. And you can hear the tone is now constant, which is annoying. But this means that the glow driver is working and it's heating up the glow plug. So if I arm the model, the first time I go above 40% throttle, it goes into maintenance mode. And it will stay in maintenance mode until I disarm. And then it goes off. So there you go, no switches, it just does it all automatically. So we'll head over to the desk and I'll show you what I've done. Right, so we're back at the desktop and I'm going to start from a fresh model so we can set this all up from scratch. So we can get the whole nitro thing done. So the first thing that I'm going to do is create two curves. The first one I'm going to call cut, which will be a two point curve, both at negative 100. which will be our throttle cut. Right, so throttle. We'll set this as a three point curve. And obviously we want one right at the top. This lower point here will be what we want to adjust to get a nice idle speed when the trim is either all the way up or in the center. So then you can trim it back to lower the idle. I'd go for center and then adjust this point here to get a nice idle speed. That way you can adjust it with trim. And then you can either adjust that one to add a throttle curve in. You could have more points if you wanted a different throttle curve. Maybe it's a 3D plane. So you wanted, you know, you want to set up the center point more for hovering, or you could just use a two point and set this up for your idle and this at a hundred for your full throttle. So they're the two curves. So we'll now, what we'll do is actually first we'll set up the arming switch so we'll go into logical switches so the first thing we're going to do is set up our arming switch so we want to make sure that the throttle is all the way down so what we select is not the input but the actual throttle stick itself and we want that say minus 96 that gives us yeah two points of movement so that's absolutely fine and now what we need is uh, an or logical switch because we need to make sure that this is active and that we're in the arming position. So we need logical switch one or logical switch two, which is itself. So at the moment, as soon as that goes less than that, it will activate, which will keep this active. And then we need a not so this here is our actual switch so 
the arming switch is I use is SF. Actually, sorry, it's not not it's yeah, so SF and these conditions are met. So if I simu uh, sorry, simulate this, we see it all works at the moment. But if I move that, you can see that that switch is now active. If I disarm, it disactivates. We just haven't put the triggers in yet, so that's why the, that is moving. So basically, when logical switch L02 is active, the model is armed. When it's not, it's disarmed. So the next thing we could do is add some feedback. So a nice simple thing would be logical switch two, play track. And then we want one that says armed. What is it? So engine arm or something on the standard stuff. I've got engine off. So that's thermal, isn't it? Normal mode, that would do. <laughs> and for disarmed, play track. engine off so this is just to give us some feedback for the example so now what we want to do is modify our throttle and we're using based on the throttle stick we need to use curve custom and the, what we're going to use is throttle the switch for that logical switch too then we can duplicate that we use cut and logical and not logical switch to. So if we now simulate, so we're getting the feedback. And if you can see on here, we've got no output from channel three. If I stick it up here, it won't arm until the throttle is all the way down. And now we have our output. Obviously this is off the bottom because don't forget we've got our idle in there as well on the idle curve. Engine so off. engine off, throttle doesn't move. So that's that's the, the first part done. So the next thing we need to do is the logic for the automatic glow. Now in this example, I'm gonna put it on channel five. Right, so now let's put in the logic for the actual um, switching itself. So the first thing that we need to check for is that our throttle is high. So when you look for the actual throttle stick, so the one without the eye, and we want that set to 96, which is quite a high position. We will be adding, I don't believe we can add it, no. <clears throat> we need to add another condition for that, but we need to create it first. So what this is gonna, ch let, I'll tell you what, we get all the logical conditions in first and then I'll explain how they're working and what they're doing. So the next thing we need is an OR. So again, that one needs to be later. And we need to be mm, negative logical, logical, <laughs> logical switch to. <clears throat> the next one is a sticky. And that needs to be logical switch four to activate it and logical switch five to deactivate it. And then the final one is to check that the throttle is above 40%. So use throttle and we set this to minus 20, which is 40%. So remember it goes from minus 100 to plus 100. So 20 is 10%. So we wanna come up 80, which would be the 40%. So now we can fill in the blanks. So on this one, we need not logical switch seven. This one, we need logical switch seven. And this one actually, we need logical switch two, which is armed. Right, so now we've got 
the the logic in i'll explain what's going on so the first one here logical switch four is we're checking to see that the um, throttle is above 96 percent and this condition here is not true now what this can so what we're effectively doing here this this is for the triggering the full power mode on the onboard glow so we're going to go put the stick to full throttle and that will cause it to start if we're disarmed we'll skip this one for the time being now we have a sticky because what will happen is this will jump up and it will not stay there so obviously we we want to when we we want to activate the onboard glow at the full power and keep it on until we want to take it off so we need this to trigger this sticky here but we don't want it on all the time we need to take deactivate it at some point so what we have here is the or statement which if this one activates or we disarm it turns this off which so the full power will go off to something else this one here logical switch seven is checking the throttle position so when it's above 40 percent or the gimbal position to be more accurate so when it's above 40 percent it will switch it from full power mode into the low power mode and it will only trigger it if we're armed so the idea is that when we switch the, the model on we're disarmed so we'll get nothing through to the onboard but glow it will set it to minus 100 on the output channel and that will tell it to, which is turned off then what we'll do in a still in a dis disarmed state we will put the throttle all the way up and all the way back down again which will trigger the full power mode and then once we arm and we go above 40 percent on the gimbal it will reduce the power mode down to the mid power level so to do that we need um first on logical sorry on not logical switch two so when it's disarmed we need to override channel five and set it to minus 100. so no matter what when we disarm it will switch off the onboard glow so the next one we want is this one here logical switch seven so when that is active we'll go to zero which is the middle position on a switch if you're doing it manually with a switch which is the half power on the onboard glow and finally we want logical switch six which is the sticky which will be our full power so that'll be 100. so if i simulate that now so we're disarmed we can see channel five is all the way down if we arm up we'll put the throttle up quick and lower it back down again you can see we're now at 100 on channel five so the onboard glow is being told to use full power to warm up the glow plug so if we now arm the model we can start the plane we can put it at idle we can raise the idle faster and at this point in time using low throttles our onboard glow is still going to be at full power and as soon as we go up past 40 percent which is around there you see channel fives just drop down to uh, zero on the output which is middle stick or switch position which is the half power mode and it will stay in half power mode now for the rest of the flight so it's still energizing the glow plug but it's at a much lower level so it doesn't drain your battery down and again if we land disarm off. then it turns it off completely and again it <clears throat> to to go fly again the next time just give the throttle a blip arm it Normal. start no, the plane off. fly and then it will automatically drop down so there we go it's a nice simple thing to make a cheap onboard glow system automated for the as i say for the most part all you all you need to do all you need to remember is blip the throttle before you try and start it and then it will be good but thank you guys for watching if you found this video useful please like 
If you subscribe and hit the notification bell, you'll get information on new videos that pop up for more OpenTX tips. Um, I'm also doing series on flight controllers, that sort of thing. So if there's anything else that takes your fancy, please watch the videos and hopefully you guys get some benefit from it. So thanks for watching. If you didn't like it, please leave a thumbs down, but please leave it in the comments what I could do to improve things. But thank you guys. Bye bye.